So it's about time we finally discuss in detail Encore Jump. While I could have done this earlier, I like to test things to a fair degree before sharing. Wouldn't imagine the number of things left on the cutting room floor that I toy around with and realize, eh, you guys don't really need to know about that, or at least too misleading given the nuance of it. But anyway, Encore probably was something I could have gotten out sooner. So anyway, let's get into it. To start, what is Encore Jump? This is a bouncer subskill for your add-ons. Unlike the main skill, you know, it's a sub skill that you're gonna have to roll to get a high level and you, of course, you have the chance of potentially losing it. The wonders of add-on skills. But what does Encore Jump do? Well, Encore Jump gives your double jump the ability, or your second jump. So if I say double jump, I'm referring to the second jump. But it gives your second jump or double jump the ability to damage enemies. At level 20 of the add-on skill, it provides 25 potency per hit. More importantly, if your double jump or your second jump successfully damages the enemy, you regain the ability to use your double jump again, thus Encore. Another performance, another jump. So of course, if you jump and hit the enemy again, that would be another 25 potency at level 20. What we're gonna do is we're going to jump in and show some simple examples of how Encore Jump works. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do our demonstration of Encore Jump. I'll probably do it in different stages. Uh, and of course, what we have is a little controller just to see what's going on. Let's look at my add-on set. As you can see, one more jump. Of course, in our JP server, what we call it one more jump. It'll be Encore Jump, but essentially it is one more jump. Hitting an enemy in the air lets you double jump again. So. The simple way to set this is hitting an enemy with your second jump or your double jump lets you double jump again. So if you continue to hit the enemy with a double jump, you can continue to double jump. As you can see at level 15, the power or potency is 20. At level 20, it would be 25. So for the sake of this demonstration, we are going to go to Retum's Lizento's Cocoon. Why? Because it is an ideal height. Well, not the ideal height. Technically, the Daedals and those larger enemies are ideal, but he is someone who we can easily see what is going on. So, in this example, I'm only going to do one thing, and that is use the jump button. As you can see, first jump, second jump, or the double jump. As you'll notice, on that double jump, there's a little shock wave. Pay attention to my feet. That is going to be Encore Jump. That is what we are aiming to hit our enemies with. If we hit the enemy with it, we get our second jump back. If we don't, we lose it. Here we go. Jump, 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 hit. Jump, 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 jump. Oh, I lost it. I did that on purpose. But here we go. Jump, 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 jump. Oh, lost it. So as you can see, the faster you press the button, the more jumps you can potentially get in. But of course, be careful. And that is essentially Encore Jump in of itself. And of course, the next thing you can do is start weaving an Encore Jump with other attacks. Thank you. 
Now, I am doing certain things specifically to Juan that I do want to call out. And you might have noticed that every time I did Encore Jump with Jizan. You might have noticed after Revoke or if the enemy was too far away, I was doing a wand parry or the wand weapon action. The reason for that is it travels a nice little distance without losing too much altitude. And so in situations where I feel like, eh, if I try another encore jump, I might lose it because I might miss the enemy. I'm sacrificing about 20 frames to get closer so that I can repeat the process, so on and so forth. Why is Encore Jump important? Well, to start, just to have a basic understanding, Encore Jumps do not have hit stop, so you can successfully use this technique without needing to wait. Other attacks in NGS, when you hit an enemy, there is hit stop, or there's something that slows things down a bit before you can do something else. Encore Jump does not have that. But more importantly, it relates to charged attacks or abilities that can be charged while moving. I want to say that because I know there are some charged abilities where you can't move, and thus if you can't move, chances are you're not using Encore Jump. Essentially, this provides additional damage during that charged state. And for the rest of this tutorial, we will be using Wands Charge Swift Smash as the primary example. So, Charge Swift Smash is 782 potency. Now, I'm factoring in things like Photonic Fury and Element Damage Bonuses, but when you factor all that in, it's 782 potency, which executes at 130 frames. 60 of those frames are required for charging, while 70 frames is the attack animation. So if we take our 782 potency at 130 frames, we are looking at about 361 DPS or damage per second. This can increase with the use of guard frames, but we will focus on the base state of Swift Smash for now. Now imagine you were able to install three Encore jumps during those 60 frames of charging, because once again, no hit stop. At level 20, you have added 75 potency or 9.6% additional potency, which would raise your charge with Smash DPS to about 396. This alone is the value of Encore Jump, but that is not it. For one thing, and this often comes up in conversation, is the fact that charged abilities are subject to human error. Charged Swift Smash is 361 DPS if you are frame perfect, releasing the charged attack on the 60th frame. Given that we're humans, given that the situation, there's always gonna be something that we have to contend with, this is likely not the case on average. So let's say you're about five frames slower. So instead of 130 frames, now we're gonna be looking at 135 frames. That puts Charge Swift Smash at about 347 to 348 DPS. This is where some Tector players might say, well, it's better to use Wave Crash because the first hit of Wave Crash is 348 DPS and it's instant. You don't have to worry about that human error. While on paper, they are right. But there are other factors that make this fundamentally flawed and something you should avoid. The fact that we have Element Revoke essentially kills this argument as Charge Swift Smash builds Revoke Meter much better than Wave Crash. So even if Charge Swift Smash was at a slight DPS loss, Swift Smash is likely still going to be in favor because it builds Revoke faster, which is one of our main damage abilities. For the sake of the arguments from a mathematical standpoint, let's say they are equal. So let's say both Wave Crash and Human Error Charge Swift Smash we're going to be doing about 347 to 348 damage per second. So the question you'd have to ask yourself is, well, how does one Encore Jump change this? For my next example, I'm not even going to do max level. We'll do level 15, which is where my Encore Jump is currently at. With level 15, Encore Jump now gives 20 potency instead of 25 potency. If we tack on the additional 5 frames of Human Error to our Charge Swift Smash, we are now at 356 DPS. This is 5 DPS below a frame perfect Swift Smash without Encore Jump. So, if we hit 3 Encore Jumps at 20 potency each, our DPS raises to 374, which is 13 more DPS than a frame perfect Swift Smash. Wave Crash 
no longer has a mathematical argument. It really never did. But for those who might want to push the, the issue, this essentially puts that to rest. At worst, you are still doing more DPS than Wave Crash. At best, you are beating it by nearly 50 DPS in addition to massive PP efficiency and also element revoke building. Now, for Tectors, why is this truly valuable? Well, the calculations we have just done did not factor in our 10% main class bonus. When we do factor that in with a three hit Encore combo, level 20, our DPS would climb from 396 to 436. Now, if we went back down to Encore Jump level 15, our DPS would be around 427 to 428 with our main class bonus. If you add fighter down damage of 5%, so once again, when an enemy is down or in that down state, you get an additional 5% damage, that DPS climbs to 456. On paper, this does more DPS than Jet Boots Jet Intensity which is the main reason if you're Tector, you're going to be using Jet Boots. Granted, I am omitting Surge Impulse, which messes with things a bit, but with Slayer coming out and the potential of crit skills becoming the ideal subclass, we will no longer have access to Jet Boots. And let's say with all of the subclass Slayer crit skills, we're gonna get overall damage increase of about 3% on average. Let's factor in that with our Charge Swift Smash DPS calculations. And this is where things get interesting because now we're looking at crit rate. Crit rate, at least from our understanding, is not gonna require the enemy to be down. That is a, another skill, a part of Slayer's add-on skill. But if we look at Charge Swift Smash, it's DPS regardless of down state if Slayer is a subclass with our assumptions would be 449 DPS if you hit three on core jump. When we were looking at fighter as a subclass during down damage, we had 456 DPS, but that required a down. So it would drop once the enemy was active again. But if Slayer skills do not have a down state condition, then if you were to hit three encore jumps with charge swift smash, you're looking at 449 DPS. Once again, essentially you're competing with jet boot intensity without all of the other conditions and restraints when it comes to using jet boot intensity or jet intensity. If you factor in the damage you gain from guards frames of Swift Smash, something that we haven't discussed, but for those who may not be familiar as a reminder, when you were executing the charge Swift Smash attack or actually even both Swift Smashes, if you were hit while you were executing the attack animation, there are guard frames. If those guard frames hit, they do 60 potency or 72 potency if it does the element damage bonus. So if we factor in the guard frames for an actively attacking enemy with three encore jumps, our DPS climbs to 486. And even with one encore jump, our DPS would be 460. Once again, not downstate, just regular swift smash with some other skills supported and encore jump, we are getting DPS numbers that are above jet intensity. I also want to factor in the Slayer skill crit hit PP gain. While we don't know the specifics of this skill, given how it reads from a naming standpoint, it would suggest that we will gain PP after a critical hit. Regardless of the PP gain or the triggers involved, the great thing about Encore Jump is it adds additional opportunities to crit and thus additional opportunities to regain PP, further increasing PP efficiency, further increasing our ability to build element revoke as quickly as possible. As an aside, you know, I always get questions time to time like what is the ideal wand or tector rotation, the attack or damage rotations. And generally I don't answer, I generally say there really is no rotation just because it's very context dependent. But I, what I would say, given the situation, given the context, given the enemy, your rotation that you want to utilize is the rotation that will effectively build element revoke as quickly as possible. Charge Swift Smash, using it well in ideal situations, is going to be one of those paths to victory, essentially. And so in a nutshell, this is why you should at least consider Encore Jump, and more importantly, removing slow landing charge from your skill tree 
as it does prevent you from using Encore Jump to its fullest. It won't completely ruin it, you can still use it, but because you no longer drop an altitude while charging, there will be limits to how you can use Encore Jump without completely jumping over the enemy's head and losing it. Other than that, hope that was helpful. Of course, questions in the comments, and I will catch you all next time.